And I am Dr. Kathy Ann Joseph. I'm a chief of uh, breast surgery at Bellevue Hospital, NYU, um, Langone Health. So in New York State, breast cancer is the most common, commonly diagnosed cancer. It's the second leading cause of cancer-related death. Um, in New York State, over 115,000 15, women are newly diagnosed. Um, 2,600 women die from breast, from, from breast cancer. It's the most commonly diagnosed um, cancer um, among every racial and ethnic group. Um, with almost 40,000 fatalities every year, it's the second leading cause of death in women. Um, it's a public health issue. Um, while better care over the past um, three decades has reduced cancer deaths by up to 24, 34% in certain communities, not all communities are benefiting equally. And that's the challenge that we still face today. So this slide, um, which is from the American Cancer Society, sort of uh, shows us, illustrates what the issues are. So when you, um, for every 22 white women that die from breast cancer, 31 black women are still, um, still die from breast cancer. So we still have that racial gap. And black women have still um, have achieved a milestone that we just don't want to achieve, which is that the incidence of breast cancer in African women in African American women have now um, matched that of white women. So what remains to be seen down the road over the next 10 years is what impact that will have on mortality, which already is highest in African American women. So for decades, the incidence of um, breast cancer in African American women was over, always lower. But we couldn't explain, there were lots of factors which went into why the mortality rates were higher. But now our incidence, I'm sorry, I don't have a pointer. Um, when you look at the mortal, when the incidence, which is in pink, um, and you look at the first two groups, um, they're pretty much equal, equivalent. And so that's the concern that we're now grappling with. So an African American woman who are diagnosed with breast cancer um, are, are obviously less likely to survive, and the rate among African American women is about 71% compared to 86% among white women. Um, and so, and translating it in, in other rates, uh, looking at it in a different way, um, while the mortality rates for white women has decreased about 1%, 2.5% a year um, for white women during the 1990s, it's only decreased 1% per year for African American women during the same time period. Um, there are lots of reasons for this. There's no one, one answer that we can attribute to this. Um, some of the disparities have to do with um, follow-up um, for um, in care for African-American women. About 40% of African-American women who have abnormalities on a mammogram never receive follow-up care, and that's a rate that's twice as high as that for white women. Um, they're more African-American women are more likely than white women to delay getting a breast biopsy, five times more likely to de delay getting treatment once they're diagnosed, and that delay usually translates to about one to two months. 20% um, of African-American women um, uh, will wait more than three months before, between the time that they develop breast cancer symptoms and then when they start treatment. And um, all, we know that delay in, treat, in starting initiation of treatment is going to have an impact on long-term survival. So these are some of the things that we're grappling with and we want to address so that we can um, improve survival from breast cancer. Um, African American women are more likely to be offered a mastectomy, which is the removal of the entire breast, um, rather than a lumpectomy, which is what we call breast conservation plus radiation. Um, when we focus now on this state, New York State, where we all live, um, I wanted to show you some trends. Um, this is breast cancer incidence. And again, um, it, the re relative rates of um, breast cancer incidence has remained sort of flat over the 1990s and 2000s, um, but there's been a gradual increase in, among African women, which is the, um, the green line. Um, when you look at mortality rates, they're dropping across all races, but again, African American women still have the highest mortality rates. Um, this slide um, is, um, looks at the um, uh, screening rates the percent by percentage across all the counties. So um, the light blue um, state counties are the ones that have the highest um, screening rates, 
And so if you're looking at New York, New York State, do we have a pointer anywhere? Um, uh, if you're looking at New York, New, um, New York City, we look pretty good. It looks like we're doing very well with, um, with breast cancer screening. And then if you go into upstate New York, where you have some of the darker blue counties, 59 to 72% screening rates. Um, so we look, it would look as if we're doing very well with breast screening rates. So it looks like, like if you look at um, Queens, Staten Island, um, we're doing better than on Long Island, where the rates are a little bit lower. But if you look at the absolute number of women that need screening, um, it, you, that tells a different story because we're looking at the absolute number. It's a little flipped because the dark blue, which is the num that is w over 2,400 women, and the white is less than 1,800. Then it's a little bit different because all of New all of the lower part of New York State, um, Westchester County, New York City, Long Island, we have a large number of women living in New York City, Long Island, Westchester, that still need screening because we have higher populations. So it all depends on how you look at the numbers because we have a lot of women, which, and we're gonna talk about why we're doing things here at NYU and Bellevue and Lutheran to address this. So you can easily look at the numbers and say, hey, we're doing pretty well in New York City, but we have large pockets of populations of women that are not getting screened. So um, in 2014, about 79% of women between the ages of 50 to 74, or 2.6 million women, reported having a mammogram. So that's pretty decent, at least within the last two years. Um, but there's still about 600,000 women that did not get screened. Um, and so what, um, when, we, when you poll women and you find out why didn't they get screened, these are some of the things that you'll hear. They're afraid it's gonna be painful. They didn't understand the need for screening. No one told me I needed to do it. Um, they don't know where to go for screening or they don't have, or they lack a regular healthcare provider. Or there's transportation barriers, um, lack of insurance or unaware of their benefits, or I, they don't wanna know if they have cancer or it's not a priority for them or for cultural religious reasons. So these are the things that we're trying to address here at our institution. So um, we have um, a, great panel of, um, and so the way that we address these health disparities is through outreach, um, community-based programs to reach these unscreened women, education, like programs like this, providing education about the importance and availability of screening, and navigation, and getting these women through the whole system. It's not enough just to um, get these women in and get a mammogram, but you also have to provide them with the um, resources so that they can get, get treated, so they're not worried about how are they gonna pay for this, how are they, um, are they gonna lose their jobs, how are they gonna manage their families. Um, so, um, and so this is what we're trying to address um, and get women through the whole continuum of care um, from the community through the healthcare system. Um, so um, we have uh, a lot of really great speakers today who are gonna address this from different angles. Um, and you'll have your opportunities to ask questions, um, both during the panel discussions and then during the breaks.